Okay, um, hi everyone, welcome back to Seven Drones, guys. It's your Saturday guy, Torian, and this week's topic is religion. Um, as you guys know from my videos, I talk about God all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm very religious. Um, I grew up going to um, I grew up going to church. We went to church every Sunday, and but grad but gradually that kind of fizzled away. We didn't go to church as much, and now I don't really go to church at all. Um, a lot of stuff happened to me whilst I was in church that makes me not want to go to church. Also, um, I don't know. I don't feel like going to church is necessary for my relationship with God. I have a relationship with Him, um, and that's all that really matters to me. Um, so let me tell you some stories about what happened to me in churches. Uh, in 2011, I met this girl through church. So during the summer, we have a children's weekend, and so I was going to perform, I was going to rap. And my sister wanted to dance, and so this girl wanted to dance too. So she was kind of like my sister's friend, but they weren't really friends until that dance happened. And so we were texting one night, and then she asked me about, like, how do I know I like girls? And I told her, I explained to her the, how I knew, and then she told me that, like, she thinks she likes girls. Well... There's a girl that she liked. Turned out that that girl was me, the old me, Finn. Uh, and so we went on a date, and like two weeks later, we started. We were in a relationship. Um, that was when I moved to where I am right now to go to school. So we were long distance. This was back where I used to live. Um, and so we were long distance. And when I was leaving, that we had taken some pictures, and I. On the back of the pictures, I wrote like some notes to her about all the things I liked about her, all the things I'm looking forward to doing, like everything. I looked like on each picture, I wrote something else. So it's one of those things that has like loads of different parts you can put different pictures in. Anyways, so one day she wasn't replying my text, and then eventually when she did reply, she said that what happened was the pastor had come to her house, went through her room, went through her things, took the pictures with him, and I was like, what the fuck? So. When we started like seeing each other, she was very, very open about our relationship. I was a bit confused as to why she was so open about it, but I've right now I realize that she was pretty naive about the whole situation about how unaccepting people could really be. And this was in two thousand and eleven, and you guys might be like, "Oh, that's not that long ago." But what happened in like the LGBTQ community in the last four or five years? It's been think about it. It's been a lot of lot of big changes in the last few years, right? So back then. Even still now, like, Nigerian people are very open-minded about it, but back then, like, nobody was talking, yeah, it wasn't acceptable at all, but she was very open about it. So, somehow, the pastor had found out, because I was surprised, I wasn't surprised he found out, but what he did was a bit, bit much, right? Uh, so, anyways, that Christmas, I went home, back to where I used to live, because I used to go back there, because that's where my family was. And my mom needed to go see the pastor, so I drove her to the pastor's house, and well, I had to stay with her there. And so the pastor was like, oh yeah, we need to talk. So he pulled me into a room on the side of the room, and uh, on, on the side of his house, right, whilst my mom was still in the living room with his wife, and brought out the pictures, and, was, and he was like, what are these? I'm like, pictures? And he's like, what, who are in the pictures? I'm like, me and my ex. I have to give her a name, I'll call her. I'll call her, like, Rakesha or something. Sounds like my Rakesha. Anyways, so who's in the picture? It's me and Rakesha. What's your relationship? Rakesha's my girlfriend. And then he's like, okay, so you're a lesbian. I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, okay. And so I was about 17 or 18 around that time. And this nigga says to me, he tells me that I'm on the path of destruction. And I'm taking this girl down the path of destruction with me. I should think about it in five years' time when this girl's life is destroyed. But in five years' time, I should think about how much better her life would have been if I if I break up with her now and stop seeing her and stop talking to her and just leave her alone. He was telling me that I was the reason, like, if anything bad happens to her, it's going to be my fault. That I'm the one leading her down this path. So I was a starter, so clearly. I was, I was visibly different and visibly gay. Like, I was very, not hide, I didn't hide my sexuality, I wasn't ashamed of it, I was gay. And so, uh, but this girl, right, she, I really like, like, petite females, so she was very small. She was about, like, this tall, I think at most she weighed, like, 110 pounds. Like, she was small, and she was skinny, and she was still in high school. She was in grade 12, I was in my first year. So... I, 
appeared as the older, more mature one in the relationship, and I was manipulating her into being with me. Like, I was spreading my gay. Like, that's what he was pretty much saying to me. Me, as a 17, 18 year old child, this grown man was telling me that I was destroying her life. And I was like, wow. I couldn't believe this nigga was telling me this shit. It was really, like, anyways, um, and so I was like, to, and, oh yeah, I was, maybe, I think I was 18, she was like five months younger than me, so she wasn't even that much younger than I was, she was, we were the same age, and I was like, to, do you realise how old she is? And it was a bit surprised, she didn't realise that, like, she was pr pretty darn, like, close to my age, how do I control someone that is pretty much my age? But anyways, so, gradually, I stopped, well, any time I went back there, I wouldn't go to the church, because, like, wow, a lot of stuff was spread about me, a lot of people were talking about it, and everyone knew what was happening. Um, at one point, the pastor had said that my mother had told him, but I, I don't remember who told me this, but the pastor said, my mother told him that the reason we moved from England to Canada is because I was gay. Yes, in England, I was going to an all-girls school, but think about it. In England, back then, um, marriage was just like common law, not really marriage. Here, marriage was legal in Canada. So my parents moved me from where being gay was okay, to a place where it's like, being gay is fine, you can get married. That's what they did. That was the solution to my homosexuality. They moved me somewhere. It was more acceptable. That's what they did. And so this is information that was going around, it was, oh, at one point, the pastor had said that my dad was going to come to the church. Oh, oh, said that my ex-girlfriend's dad was going to come to the church and fight with my dad because of me. And I, I mentioned this to my ex-girlfriend and she was like, my dad, my, my dad is, come on. Like, this is shit that was, like, being said. And so after that i didn't fuck with the church as much even she had to move churches so no ne neither of us went to that church and this is around the same time like after that before this my parents were really, weren't at all okay with me being gay like they weren't they didn't talk, we didn't really talk about it but when it was talked about they weren't okay with it after this whole situation i noticed that my parents mind shifted i personally don't understand what or how or why their mind shifted but what um this was like after me and my ex broke up and after the whole situation, like my second Rakisha, two exes ago, broke up, yeah. And so um I think they realized that I had enough enemies in the world. There were enough people out there in the world that were gonna make my life a misery. So why should they as my parents do the same? I know that also God had something to do with it. But do you get what I mean? So I think that's what happened. They just realized that like he doesn't need any more well, back then she she doesn't need any more enemies like we can we can love her and so my parents stopped going to that church too like we had nothing to do with that church anymore another story ah uh, when i moved to where i am now i started going to a church same same denomination of churches nigerian church mostly there's other countries there but mostly nigerian um and in this church once again it's definitely a girl that got me into trouble after me and rakisha broke up there was this girl i met Weird thing, my best friend in England, her and this girl used to be, well, they were friends in England. So when this girl moved to Canada and I moved to Canada, me and this girl met up. Right, it's crazy. The world is really small. Anyways, um, so me and this girl were friends and whilst me and Rakisha were still together. So every time me and Rakisha would have a problem, I would usually go to this girl. Now I think about it, I'm like, that wasn't the best idea because, well, this girl liked me, so... Yeah, I don't think <laughs> talking to a girl that likes you about your failing relationship helps your relationship. I don't think so. <laughs> I realise that now. Anyway, so after we broke up, me and this girl started hooking up. And she's the pastor's daughter. But her dad's church is the same type of church, but in the city next to us here. So her dad is not in the same church. But, once again, the Nigerian community is very is small. Well, it might not even be small. But word, get, like, word always gets around. Anyway, so this girl was talking, decided to talk to someone about our relationship. Someone in church found out. Next thing you know, the pastor is talking to me. <laughs> so the pastor of that church, every time he saw me, every time, he would be like, we need to talk, we need to talk, we need to talk. And we never had a conversation 
terms maybe he didn't have he didn't know what to talk to me about and so around the time me and this girl started seeing each other right, he found out that's when he was like okay i was in church one day and he was like we need to talk you know that talk we've been meaning to have we're gonna have it today i'm like okay finally yeah we're gonna talk but i knew what it was gonna be about so at the end of church he calls me into this room there's like two other people in there or something and then he asked me are you a lesbian and i was like yes i am <laughs> and he's like i thought as much okay so he bring up the bible he goes to leviticus 23 i'm pretty sure that's what it is um i think right but yeah, he brings out the passage I've heard millions and millions and millions of times because this is the go-to passage and then the other one is in Corinthians anyways. So he reads this passage to me and I'm like, I know this, I know this because it's like in around the same area where they're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah and the people that... And so people always like to go to the homosexuality one where a man shouldn't lie with a man the same way uh, he lies with a woman, blah, 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 right there. But they always forget the other parts where men are sleeping with their daughters, rape and incest and all that shit, they forget that one, but they go straight for the homosexuality. So he's preaching to me and I'm like, cool, 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 cool. So, and he's like, well today I'm going to give you the choice, we can pray out your demon. So he was going to pray out my gay demon, right? And so, this was around the t time me and my ex, as I said, we broke up. And I was very, 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 I would say I was extremely depressed about it. So I was hooking up with people, a lot of, I hooked up with a few people around that time after. But this was one of the main people that was consistent, the girl. Um, and so, I forgot my point. Yeah, but anyway, so after the breakup, I was depressed. Before the breakup, I was, I, it was really bad. I broke up with her, but I had lost weight. I think I weighed like 110 pounds, that was very small, but I'm like, I'm quite tall, not quite tall, I'm taller than she was, so I was on the way and I smoked a lot, like it was very, very bad, I was not in a good place at all. So, when we broke up, I was depressed and everyone that was talking to me about it was, it was pretty much like a, this didn't work out because you're not supposed to be with girls type of things because you're a lesbian type of thing and your relationship with girls will never work out type of thing and so that's what i started to believe so when he offered me the opportunity to pray away my demon when me and my ex broke up i prayed about it i like cried to god about it like why 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 help me help me help me so when this guy said that oh he's gonna pray out my demon i'm like yes this is god sending the, me the help i want and i was like okay totally man do it do it so that day I'd worn a tie to church, I wore a blazer, like I was looking fly. So this nigga told me, take off your watch, take off your chain, take off your earring. I had my eyebrow pierced, take off your eyebrow piercing, take off your nose ring. Take everything off. I took everything off and he took it. And then he told me that I had to start dressing like a girl. And in my mind, I'm like, he's like, well, the way you appear outside is the same way you're going to be living your life on the inside. You cannot be dressing like a boy. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I was like, okay, <laughs> so I took it, it took everything from me, and then they prayed for me. There were three of them in the room, they prayed for me, and as they were praying my demon down, this little, he didn't even knock, why did I knock? He opened the door, this little boy, like five years old, I used to give him my phone to play with all the time, he was like my little brother, so I'd give him my phone, so he had come to give me back my phone, so he opened the door, and he was like, he started talking to me. Whilst these people were praying the demon out of me, I, this little boy walks into the room. And if you know anything about demons, they jump out of one person and they jump right into somebody else. And I'm like, what? So this full, this little boy, we have a full blown cop, like they have a conversation, we all have a conversation with him. And then he leaves the room. The mum, his mum was one of the ladies praying for me, which was weird. And she was just shocked. She was like, the face was like, how the hell do you know my son? Are you spending time with him? So, rest assured, after that day, that boy never spoke to me ever again. Like, he would see me, I'd say hi to him. He would look at me and, like, look away. Like, he would, he told, his mum probably told him to never, like, to stay away from me. It was pretty sad, but he never spoke to me after that day. And if anyone knows, I love children. That's what I do with my life, right? It was really sad that I lost this little boy. Anyways, um, so they continued to pray for me. And then I did and he told me that I should start living my life as a girl. Um, and that was it. 
a week later he texted me asking me how I was doing but that was it they didn't tell they didn't get me personally this is what I would have done I would have given this person a mentor a female mentor who could teach this person how to be a fucking girl or oh, what and um talk to them give them some bible verses no nothing after that day after the text nothing nothing came about it a few months later walking around the church I found my watch you might be like, why did you keep going to the church? And it wasn't like I went all the time. It was like one time whilst I was there a few months later. I found my watch sitting somewhere. What the fuck did they do with all my things? If I could find my watch. I think another time I found my tie. I found a few of my uh, pieces of my things just randomly around the church. So these possessed items were left around. They took my shit and left it. I was, I was just like... What the fuck? So after that situation, I they they ruined my relationship with God. Well, I allowed them to get between me and God because I was thinking that God has sent them to me to help me live my life better, get me out of this path of destruction. You know, I thought that I could, like I couldn't believe that He allowed them to use His name to take Him up, like to do that to me. I couldn't believe it, but after loads of reflection, I realised that it was my fault, <laughs> like, I allowed them to do that, like, they didn't force it upon me, I allowed it, I accepted what they, they gave me, they told me that, they made it seem like they, that God had sent them, and I accepted that, and it's like, you can't do that, allow me to be the one who judges you, that's what I felt like, the lesson was from that, like, that I, there'll be people out there, there'll be people out there that try to use his name, there'll be people out there who try to take my identity away from me, and I cannot allow that to happen, because if, if I allow it to happen, I only have myself to blame, which is honestly what happened in the end, after loads of, lo like, a bunch of reflection, I realised that, that I allowed it to happen to me, and after that day, like, that's where my strength comes from, after that day, no one, literally nothing you can say to me can make me feel shitty about who I am as a person. Like, you, in what I mean is like, if you'd say anything about me being trans, my sexuality, since I'm not lesbian anymore, but, since I don't identify as a lesbian anymore, sorry, um, there's nothing you can say to me that can make me feel bad about who I am. Like, about being trans, like, I've had people send me, like, pictures saying, with people, like, someone reposted my picture and people saying shit on me. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, like, I don't care. Your opinion, like, literally matters on earth. When we die, what does your opinion affect? Nothing. So, why should I allow your opinion to affect my life? So, that's where my strength comes from. The fact that I allowed that to happen one time, and since then, it's like, I'm never going to allow that to happen ever again. Like, nothing you can say to me. We can't use God. You can't, if you can't use God as a reason for me to change my life, what reason do you have? Like, what do you really, so me, I 100% believe, this is what I believe about God and how he judges people. If you do not believe what you've done is wrong, I don't think he's going to punish you for it. So, there's people out there who have mental disabilities and believe like, sleeping with children or killing people or, or raping someone is not wrong they don't believe it's wrong in their minds but they're doing it they don't think what they're doing is wrong they don't get it i personally don't believe that god is going to punish someone who doesn't get it because how can you like they don't get it <laughs> what's the punishment when you don't get it you know like so but if you know what you're doing is wrong and you continue to do it that's when you're going to get punished it applies to everything in this world for example if even if you identify as a homosexual and gay and you think being gay is wrong you think god is not okay with being gay you're christian you believe in god you think god is not okay, or whatever you're not christian you're religious or whatever you believe in and you believe that your higher power believes your homosexuality is wrong and yet you continue to be a homosexual I believe that you will be punished for that because you think what you're doing is wrong and yet you continue to do it that's a bit hypocritical you're gonna get punished but I don't believe being trans is wrong I don't think it, this is how God made me this is who I am this is who I am so I don't think he's gonna punish me for being who I am. You can say whatever you want. I've been through it, I've been through it. Those are just two stories, those are the two major ones, but like, I've been through it. I've been going through it since I came out. Especially from the Nigerian community, like my own people are doing this to me, right? Are saying these stuff to me. 
do you think what you have to say is going to bother me? They used my God, they used my father against me. You think what you have, nah man, like, you can't, you can't fuck with that. No, sorry, like, I've got God on my side. That's why I always talk about him, because, like, with God there's hope. You can have hope without God. But for me, like, that's where my hope comes from. I believe, like, I love him. Like, I love him very much, and... It, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna allow anyone to take him away from me. I will use my being trans. You can't be trans or religious. I'm like, shut up. You know nothing about my relationship with God. At the end of the day, I'm, I was gonna say if being trans is wrong, I don't believe being trans is wrong at all. But at the end of the day, God is going to judge me, not you. Your judgment means nothing. Nothing, cause you're getting judged too, darling. So yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed my video, it's long, but I hope you enjoyed my stories. Yeah, um, make sure you comment, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, make sure you tell everyone that God loves them. Yeah, I don't push my religion or my relationship with God on people, but I always make sure they know that he exists in my life. Because I wouldn't be who I am today, I wouldn't be where I am today, I wouldn't be able to be as resilient as I am today without him. Like, I can't, I can't. Anyway, so yeah, bye guys.